It's a great day for a celebration at Rose Holman. Let me fix that hat for you. Usually we get to sit in Hatfield Hall and reminisce about the last four years. We've worked very hard and accomplished a lot. We'll get a chance to have that conversation. For now, let's take a walk through campus. Normally I worry about the weather on graduation day. Even bought a thousand umbrellas last year just in case it rained. No need today. It was just four years ago that you made this walk up the hill during freshman orientation. Lots happened in those four years. All these people are celebrating your accomplishments with you. Hold your head high. This is Rose Holman. To the Rose Holman class of 2020, the modern anniversary symbol for 20 years is platinum, a noble metal, which finds uses in medical devices and scientific laboratories, lasers and electronics, catalytic converters and photographic materials. You run bravely toward problems armed with solutions. You exemplify resolve, strength and malleability. You, the Rose Holman class of 2020, personify this rare and precious metal. Cheers to our platinum class. Congratulations, friends. I expect to hear great things, and I hope to see you at homecoming very soon. Congratulations. We're proud of you, class of 2020. Your journey of learning continues. Remember that we're still here for you even after graduation, whether it's mentoring, collaborating, or helping with technical questions. We're always excited to hear from you. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations on your graduation from Rose Holman. We are all super proud of you. Alexa, what do you have to say to the graduating class? Congratulations, Rose Holman class of 2020. I know you'll do great things, including making me understand your requests better. Go, Rose. Congratulations, class of 2020. You did it. Congratulations! Congratulations, class of 2020. We are so proud of you. I've enjoyed spending time with many of you during the past few years. As you enter into your new phase of your lives, I hope you have rewarding careers and build fulfilling relationships. And I hope you have some time in the future to come back and visit. You Good made job. it. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. Great job. Thanks for being a part of our heaven on earth. Hello seniors, this is Eric Leobis. Just wanted to send you my congratulations for graduating. You did it, congratulations. Uh, we missed you all very much. And uh, if you ever get the chance and are ever in town, don't be a stranger. We'd love to see you all back on campus. So congratulations and we'll hope to see you soon. Hey everybody, congrats. It's an exciting day. Hope you're proud of what you've accomplished. Some of you might recognize this place and spend a little bit of time here. And if you did, I hope you take nothing but positive memories of your experiences here. Um, looking forward to having you all come back and sharing your stories of all the great things that you're doing out there in the world. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Congratulations, class of 2020. Way to persevere. I'm proud to call you fellow alumni. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations, you've done it. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. Hi, everyone. I brought a friend with me here to wish you a, a happy graduation. I wish we could all be together. I'm missing you and thinking of you. Congratulations. Keep in touch. Good luck with your career and hope to see you at homecoming soon.
you have passed the test and you are ready to go and challenge the world. It's been an unusually exciting year, but we believe you're ready. We wish you all the best and congratulations. Yes, yes. Class of 2020, your perseverance is inspiring. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations, seniors. Great job. You did it. You are now true engineers. Good job. Congratulations, seniors. Woo! You made it. Yeah, Good job. Seniors. Way to go. Way to go. Woo! Congratulations, seniors, and good luck in your next phase of life. Way to go, 2020. You amaze me. Congratulations. You've done it. Go fighting engineers. Hey, guys, I want to congratulate you for the class of 2020. Be strong, brave, and have a great success in your careers. Congratulations, class of 2020. So excited for you as you start your next chapter in your life. Welcome to the alumni family, Forever Rose. Normally we get to hear the Indianapolis pipes and drums on this walk. In their absence, I thought I'd play you a little tune. You don't want to hear that, but you'll get a chance to hear them when we do this on campus in person. Welcome class of 2020, President Coons, trustees, alumni, faculty, staff, friends, and family. Thank you all for tuning in to this unique and momentous event to celebrate Rose Holman's graduating class of 2020. During our time at Rose, the class of 2020 demonstrated amazing resilience as we are no strangers to change. We altered history our very first day we stepped onto campus, bringing the highest concentration of women in a class since women were admitted in 1995. As our time on campus progressed, our email inboxes became less full of SharePoint emails and were swapped with emails containing, for more information, visit My Rose Holman. Our campus grew with new land, a renovated student union, the addition of the kick, a bike share program, an outdoor pavilion, and an almost completed academic building. We also witnessed a leadership change and went from no ice is safe ice to figure skating on Speed Lake. And of course, we are one of the only classes to not make the historic walk down the hill today. Although we cannot be together in person, I know today will be just as memorable as any other commencement, if not more. Especially during times like these, I am so proud to be a part of the Rose Holman family. I am so thankful for the faculty and staff members who have put in countless hours to make this event extraordinary. As you watch the ceremony today, I encourage you to reflect on your positive moments on campus and what makes you proud to be a part of the Rose Holman family. Congratulations, the class of 2020. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing the 16th president of Rose Holman Institute of Technology, Robert A. Coons, otherwise known to students as badass Bobby Coons. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Greetings, class of 2020, wherever you are. It's my pleasure to be speaking to you from your second home, a place I hope you'll be able to revisit very soon. For now, let's enjoy this day and mark the culmination of four years of hard work. Today, you'll receive your Rose Almond degree and join a very elite group of the finest scientists, engineers, and mathematicians anywhere in the world. Many of you are surrounded at this moment, perhaps in person, perhaps virtually, by your closest friends and family members. In many cases, these are the same people who were hugging you goodbye four years ago when you first arrived here on campus. I encourage you to take a moment to thank them for supporting you and helping make this day possible. When you came to Rose, you accepted a very big challenge. You were committing yourself to an intellectual enterprise that would equal or surpass anything that most people experience at any point in their lives. 
You came to Rose because you wanted to be challenged. When you arrived, you likely found yourself surrounded by classmates who were as intellectually determined and successful as yourself. You sought a challenge and you found it, but you stayed the course, sought help when you needed it, helped others when you could, and finally made it to this landmark moment in your life. For many of you, the transition to a world without capstone projects, term papers, and final exams will be as jarring as your first quarter at Rose Holman. But you'll adjust and bring the same level of energy to your careers, graduate school, or military service that you showed as a student. In the past four years, you've made wonderful friendships and formed lifelong relationships. I encourage you to keep those bonds alive. You will probably never again meet people like the friends you've made at Rose Hallman, and you've all undoubtedly had some unique shared experiences. Your spring quarter of this year has been a little unusual, to say the least. But I'm proud of how all of you have met that challenge. I'm equally proud of our faculty and staff for their hard work, creativity, and determination to make the most of this situation and continue to deliver the world's best STEM education to each of you in many cases from hundreds or even thousands of miles away. As always, the Rose community has excelled in the face of adversity. In addition to honoring our graduates, normally at a commencement ceremony, we have the pleasure of welcoming back to campus the 50-year graduating class. Sadly, that's not possible this year, but I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize all the members of the class of 1970. Thank you for taking part in this ceremony from your homes around the world. And I hope you can all join us at Rose in the near future for a special recognition that you deserve. And while I'm on the subject of special events, we are planning a special event that will enable the class of 2020 and the 50th reunion class to experience many of the wonderful traditions of a true Rose Hallman commencement. We'll keep you posted as those plans take shape and I sincerely hope to see all of you on campus when that day arrives. However, as you reflect on your accomplishments in your time at Rose Hallman, in whatever forms it may have taken, I'd ask that you consider the simple words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, what lies behind us and what lies before us are all small matters compared to what lies within us. Keep in mind that the experiences, knowledge, and expertise gained while you were at Rose Hallman truly lies within each of you and will help guide you into a bright future. I want to wish you the best on this memorable and important day. You are forever a part of the Rose Hallman family, and I know you will make all of us very proud. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Sheston Culpepper, president of the class of 2020. Hello to everyone watching, particularly all of my fellow graduates. I hope you are all doing well and are surrounded by loved ones who have championed your success on this special day. I wish we could all be together to share our final farewells to campus, but I'm happy to be together in the way that we can be right now. Goodbyes and endings are never easy, and in many ways, our class didn't get either at Rose. While we definitely did not get the spring quarter we expected, we can relish in the time we did have. The 2 a.m. trips to Chavez, the sunny spring days spent out on the lake, the movie marathons after giving up on homework. These are the stories we will tell when people ask us about our four years. Notice that very little of what impacts us are the classes that we take or the grades that we get. It is about the people we have around us, supporting us through this adventure. The friends we make, the professors that mentor us, they become our second family, our Rose Holman family. I challenge you not to be quick to forget this when life gets crazy and as time passes. Remember to always show gratitude to those who inspire you and help you through the challenges of life because that is what remains truly important. This sentiment has become increasingly more obvious to me as the entire world is fighting COVID-19 and we're all isolated from each other. Although I couldn't convince administration to reopen the school to have the best senior week the school has ever seen, I hope that you continue to remember the good times. Don't let one lost quarter define your time in college. Rather, focus on the family you've created over these four years. So, class of 2020, thank you. Thank you for the four years of fun and learning. Thank you for being my Rose Holman family. 
I hope you all feel the same way I do looking back, which is I am accomplished for graduating from Rose Holman, and I'm proud to have done so as a part of the class of 2020. I now welcome Eric Hayes, our Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, to present this year's John T. Royce Award. Thank you, Sheston. It is my honor to present the John T. Royce Award. The John T. Royce Award is given in honor of Mr. Royce for his many years of service to the institution as a member of our Board of Managers. The Royce tradition on the Board of Trustees remains yet today as his son, John N. Royce, continues to be an emeritus member. The award is presented to the graduating senior who, in the opinion of the faculty and staff, is considered to be our most outstanding graduate based on four criteria. Academic achievement, student leadership, participation in co-curricular activities, and general campus citizenship. This year's winner of the Royce Award is Connor Ray. Connor has excelled in all aspects of his Rose Holman career. His faculty consistently rave about his success in their classes, stemming from his insatiable desire to push himself to learn beyond the course requirements. His 3.99 GPA, darn that one credit B plus in analytical chemistry lab, are a clear indicator of his accomplishments. But what stands out even more is that when asked about Connor, his instructors will first talk about his compassion and commitment to his fellow students. One of his professors said, Connor makes his world and the world of those around him better through his maturity and warm demeanor. I couldn't agree more. While Connor's work in the classroom is exceptional, what he does beyond his academics is equally as impressive. Connor currently serves as the president of the Chem Car team and vice president of RHA. He has initiated dozens of community service activities with Rives Hall, local elementary schools, and the United Way of the Wabash Valley, just to name a few. As a member of the A-Team, he can often be seen leading groups of prospective students around campus, beaming with pride as he talks about Rose Holman. Connor has immersed himself in every aspect of our institution. Perhaps that is why he is the reigning champion of the AOPI Mr. Rose competition. Connor has also served for the past two years as a resident assistant in Bloomberg Hall. His residents repeatedly talk about the impact he has had on their lives, both academically and personally. One student said, he is a large reason that I decided to stay at Rose Holman. He is a fantastic RA in person and has really made this decision to come to Rose Holman worth it. Connor thoroughly embodies all four aspects of the Royce Award. Today, he is graduating as a double major in chemical engineering and chemistry. After graduation, he will move to Denver, Colorado, where he'll work at a patent law office and begin studying to earn his law degree. It gives me great pleasure to congratulate Connor Ray from Lockport, Illinois, as this year's John T. Royce Award winner. It is now my pleasure to introduce Herman A. Munch, Distinguished Professor and Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Thomas Adams, to present this year's Herman A. Munch, Distinguished Senior Commendation. Thank you, Eric. It is my honor to present the Herman A. Munch Distinguished Senior Commendation. Herman A. Munch was a professor at Rose for 50 years. He was a mentor and a role model for generations of students. More than any other single person, Professor Munch personified Rose Holman's values and ideals. We honor his legacy each year at graduation by presenting this heirloom quality clock to the student who best exemplifies the characteristics of honesty, self-discipline, compassion, and moral conviction. The student receiving this award must be dedicated to serving the Rose Holman community, and the service must be distinguished as a commendable influence on members of that community. This year's Herman A. Munch Distinguished Senior Commendation goes to Miss Rachel Schubella. Hailing from Salt Lake City, Utah, Rachel came to Rose Holman to pursue a double major in chemical engineering and chemistry. In the past four years, not only has she been a model engineering and science student, she has been a student athlete serve in leadership roles in various campus organizations, engaged in campus and community service, and conducted basic research that has been disseminated at the national level. Her impressive list of achievements includes being a three-season varsity athlete in track and cross country, serving as president of the Rose Holman chapter of the American Institute for Chemical Engineers, being a tutor in the Learning Center since her freshman year, being an active member of both Alpha Chi Sigma and Omega Chi Epsilon, and contributing to local outreach activities such as the Vigo County Literacy Fair. As a chemical engineering student, Rachel participated in teams that won third place in the K-12 student outreach competition for the American Institute for Chemical Engineers 
and second place in the PepsiCo Society of Women Engineers National Student Engineering Challenge. As a chemistry student, she has twice presented her research on the equilibrium characteristics of 1,3 keto esters at the National American Chemical Society Conference. Rachel believes teams are more important than individuals, and she has inspired her fellow Rose students to strive to be their best in all their endeavors. Nowhere is this more evident than in her recently attending two different conferences on opposite ends of the country on the same weekend. Rachel took a red-eye flight from Orlando, Florida to Orange County, California in order to serve as an ambassador for Rose and to support her teammates. And if all that wasn't impressive enough, Rachel ran 3,489 miles last year alone. Congratulations to Rachel Chubella for earning the Herman A. Munch Distinguished Senior Commendation. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Rick Stamper. Thank you, Dr. Adams. The Hemingway Gold Medal is presented each year to honor the student graduating from Rose Holman with the highest overall grade point average. Sarah Hemingway was the cousin of our founder, Chauncey Rose, and she established the award in 1888. It was first presented to Edward Guy Waters at the Institute's fourth graduation ceremony. Today, I have the pleasure to announce that three students are graduating with a perfect 4.0 grade point average. Each will receive a Hemingway Gold Medal for this outstanding achievement. Congratulations to Zhao Cheng Xin, receiving today a Bachelor of Science degree with a double major in Electrical Engineering and Mathematics. Kevin Michael Ferguson, receiving today a Bachelor of Science degree with a double major in Mechanical Engineering and Mathematics. Gabriel Loren Puri Huff, receiving today a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering. Congratulations to all three of you. Next, it's my pleasure to present the Dean's Outstanding Teacher Award. This award was established in 1968 to recognize the individuals who show outstanding teaching ability and tremendous dedication to our students both in and out of the classroom. I'm pleased to announce that this year's recipient is Dr. Rebecca DeVazier, Associate Professor of Chemistry. Dr. DeVazier received her bachelor's and doctoral degrees in chemistry from the University of Alabama in 2000 and 2004, respectively. She joined the faculty of Rose Holman in 2004 and was named an honorary alumna in 2019. As an educator, Dr. DeVazier is noted for her passion for student learning. She is known for being challenging but fair, working with her students outside of the classroom, and a love of her subject. In the words of one student, Rebecca DeVazier is a phenomenal professor. In and out of the classroom, she puts her students first and makes them feel comfortable and welcome. She treats students with respect and listens to what we have to say. Dr. DeVazier is also noted as a compassionate and effective mentor for undergraduate research, focusing on individualized, self-driven student learning. Her research in green chemistry to reduce the use of and exposure to hazardous chemicals is another demonstration of her concern for students. The phrase above and beyond occurred multiple times in the nomination submitted on her behalf. Dr. DeVazier, congratulations on being named the 2020 Dean's Outstanding Teacher. Now, President Coons will present two additional awards. Thank you, Dr. Stamper. The Board of Trustees established the Outstanding Scholar Award to recognize one faculty member each year who represents the highest standards of scholarship and who serves the community as a role model for professional development. This year's recipient meets those criteria perfectly. It is my pleasure to announce the 2020 Board of Trustees Outstanding Scholar is Adam Nolte, Department Head and Associate Professor of Chemical Engineering. Dr. Nolte earned his bachelor's degree from the University of Missouri Rolla in chemical engineering and his doctorate from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in material science and engineering. He joined the Rose Hallman faculty in 2009. Dr. Nolte's work includes breast cancer detection, environmentally responsive coatings, and analysis of thin films and composites. In each area, he has worked with colleagues and students across disciplines and in five different departments. He also works with partners in industry and at institutions such as Purdue University, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and the University of Pennsylvania. His work has been published in journals such as Advanced Materials and ACS Biomaterials Science and Engineering. 
Many of his publications, posters, and presentations include undergraduate and master's level collaborators. In addition, he has garnered nearly $500,000 in grants and has given numerous invited talks at institutions across the country. What's more, most of his work has been accomplished while serving as a department head, making his record even more notable. Congratulations, Adam Nolte, the 2020 Board of Trustees Outstanding Scholar. I am now honored to present the President's Outstanding Service Award. Each year, this award recognizes a staff member who has truly exemplified the dedication, hard work, and commitment to the Institute and its students that make Rose Hallman the special place it is. It is my pleasure to announce the recipient of the President's Outstanding Service Award for 2020 is Janie Zabo, Instructional Designer in the Office of Learning and Technology. Every crisis has its heroes. For us, the crisis was transitioning from face-to-face -to, -face to remote learning in a matter of days this spring due to COVID-19. This was a monumental task with no playbook and no precedent. The entire Rose Hallman community pulled together to meet this challenge, but Janie stood out as a person who tirelessly worked to make this transition as smooth as possible. I think members of our faculty who nominated Janie for this award say it best. As one wrote, Janie was a superstar before the pandemic, but has not stopped her level of commitment and dedication during this stay-at-home period. While no one ever expected total remote online learning at Rose, Janie already had videos made walking faculty members through the basics of teaching online. Another faculty member wrote, Janie embodies the culture of Rose. She is always eager to help in any way possible. Whenever I have an issue, I know that if I turn to Janie, the task will get done. Janie's knowledge, dedication, hard work, and positive attitude exemplify the level of excellence synonymous with Rose Hallman. I am personally grateful for all she's done this spring and during her, all her years of service. It is my sincere pleasure to name Janie Zabo the recipient of this year's President's Outstanding Service Award. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, who will also be receiving one of the highest honors conferred by Rose Hallman, the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. Eric Holcomb was elected Indiana's 51st governor in 2016 after many years of public service, including serving as the state's lieutenant governor, a member of the United States Navy, and a trusted advisor to Senator Dan Coats and former Governor Mitch Daniels. A known consensus builder, Governor Holcomb travels the state working with individuals of all political persuasions to make Indiana a better place for us all. He was named one of the top 10 governors shaping the future of politics by The Hill, and like Rose Hallman, he has received a number one ranking from U.S. News and World Report. The magazine named Indiana's government the best in the nation in 2017. Since taking office, Governor Holcomb has focused on improving the state's infrastructure, battling the opioid crisis and working closely with industry and educators to bridge the divide between workers' skills and the skills employers need. He is also focused on helping incarcerated Hoosiers learn essential job skills necessary for their long-term success. And in 2019, he received a Miro Award for promoting the growth of Indiana's technology sector. Nationally, he is the policy chairman for the Republican Governors Association and beyond our borders, Governor Holcomb has worked hard to integrate Indiana into the global economy. He was named International Citizen of the Year by the International Center for his contributions to the globalization of the state. Before we hear from him, I have a very special presentation to make in recognition of the governor's years of public service and tireless effort on behalf of our state and its people. On this 30th day of May, 2020, by the authority vested in me by Rose Hallman Institute of Technology's Board of Trustees, I hereby present to Governor Eric Holcomb the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, honoring significant career achievements and leadership that has helped bring prosperity and innovation to Indiana and its citizens, along with a lifelong commitment to public service. Thank you, Governor, for all you've done. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Rose Hallman's commencement speaker for the class of 2020, Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb. Thank you, President Coons, for the honor you've given me. President Coons, distinguished trustees, faculty, alumni, parents, and most of all, graduates. Of all the ceremonies and joyful events I get to participate in, this is the one I've really been looking forward to. Although as great as this technology is, it's a poor substitute 
for being able to see you all face to face. But look at the good side. You get to do what graduates throughout history have wanted to do. Fast forward through the commencement address. I'm here, first and foremost, to applaud your tremendous accomplishments. That you are part of this virtual celebration is a testament to your grit and perseverance and to the innovation and excellence Rolls-Holman is famous for. When I think about this school, the only comparison I can think of is the greatest dynasties in sports history. The UCLA Bruins, 10 national championships in 12 years under John Wooden, a Hoosier, by the way. Bill Russell's 11 NBA championships in 13 years. Our United States women's soccer team winning four World Cups and four Olympic gold medals since 1991. For all of their dominance over the years, those teams have nothing on you. The Rolls-Holman Institute of Technology has been ranked the number one undergraduate engineering college by U.S. News and World Report for 21 straight years. The only sports achievement that can compare with those numbers is Michael Phelps's 23 gold medals, and he didn't win those in a row. You now join an elite group of some 18,000 Rolls-Holman alumni, engineers, entrepreneurs, leaders, judges, educators, authors, and artists. Like my lifelong pal, Tim Sendrick, who graduated from Rolls-Holman with an engineering degree and is now the president of Team Penske, a number one team in auto racing. Roger Penske himself credits a lot of his success to Tim's, quote, remarkable vision, patience, determination, and unique ability to lead people. Traits he learned at Rose Holman are like Abe Silverstein, a Rose graduate who many people probably have never heard of. Hoosiers celebrate Purdue University for having produced the most astronauts of any school outside of our service academies including Neil Armstrong and Gene Cernan, the first man on the moon and the last. But they never would have gotten there without Abe Silverstein, who created the Apollo program and who helped make the moon landings themselves possible. When your recruiters promote Rose Holman, they talk about one of the best return on investments in the country, a 98% placement rate, high starting salaries. The school is a springboard for top graduate schools. But a survey taken of your alumni underscored another thing. The firm that conducted the survey said they've never seen such affinity to a school as they saw with Rose Holman. Alumni cited the personal attention, the collaborative environment, how the school focuses not just on skill sets, but on finding meaning and purpose. That's the perfect lead in to three things I wanna leave with you. First, put what you've learned here to work. Rolls-Holman's vision is that graduates will be inspired and prepared for lives of purpose and success defining and solving the problems of a complex global society. These are exactly the kinds of citizens and leaders we need now. We're counting on you more than ever. The skills you have acquired not only will help you navigate our complex world, they are the foundation of America's greatness. We're a nation that invents and builds cars and planes, spaceships and skyscrapers, bridges and roads, next generation technology. We discover and develop vaccines and treatments. And I don't need to tell you, the pressure to meet the global demand on all of these fronts has never been greater. So no pressure. That's why we need your skills to revitalize our infrastructure, to power our homes and cities, to feed the world, to protect our environment, and yes, to find treatments for diseases like COVID-19. 
Regardless of your major, your training has fostered your ingenuity and creativity, strengthened your resilience, encouraged experimentation and teamwork, and taught you how to actually solve problems. In a world of smart machines, your skills and knowledge differentiate you in the industries of the future and will thus help the United States continue to differentiate itself in a competitive world. Rolls-Hulman's vision mentions not just success, but also purpose. So my second request is be part of something bigger than yourself. One of your administrators who has been around a long time told me they've seen a shift recently in the way students think about the future. He said that while your choice of profession is still important to you, you're also thinking about the impact you can make at a societal and even a global level. That it's not just about finding a good job and making a good living, but about making a positive impact on the world. And your alumni said, along with providing deep expertise and skills, Rolls-Holman inspired them to find meaning and purpose. That it's not just about your individuality, but your influence on the collective. Whatever path you choose, whatever you do, Think about how you can serve others. Think about what you can give back to your hometown, your community, your country, indeed our world. So here's my one last ask. All of you, give Indiana strong consideration because the truth is we need, and more importantly, we want every one of you to stay here and make it big. Because I know the type of graduates Rolls-Holman produces. I know what you bring to the table. You are difference makers, discoverers, doers, curve raisers, collaborators, innovators and inventors, fearless force multipliers. You turned science fiction into science faction making old predictions and popular mechanics magazines look outdated and obsolete. You are the secret ingredient to Indiana's future. And I commend your sense of timing, although for most of you, I think that your parents probably had more to do with that, but regardless of where the credit is due, the truth is in the 204 year history of our state, there's never been a more wide open an exciting, empowering time to be a Hoosier than right now. Among all 50 states, Indiana is a leader in fields like advanced manufacturing, life sciences, aviation and aerospace, orthopedics, and we're a growing power in areas like high tech and cybersecurity. Among the Indiana centric headlines I collect are the ones that recognize we are one of the very best states for successful startups and homegrown tech talent in the past decade or one of the best places to start a business right now or one of the top 10 places for women in tech. Indiana's resurgence and momentum is due in part to the incredible mark Rolls-Holman faculty and graduates have made on and in our state. You both are and will be educating the next generation of Hoosiers in various ways, on campus and soon off. Finding those treatments and cures that will enable Hoosiers to lead healthier, longer lives. Creating those businesses that are already transforming lives of Hoosier citizens and the communities where we all live. You're the entrepreneurs, scientists, engineers, the leaders who are making our lives better. Call it pride or call it greed on my part, but that's why we need you here and we're counting on you. Every single one of you can make a tremendous difference. That's been proven. 
And now more than ever, Indiana is a place where your dreams, whatever they are, can come true. But don't take it from me. Take it from Abe Silverstein, who once said, you don't predict the future, you make it. Congratulations, graduates, on this well-earned celebration and extremely important turning point in your lives. Thank you very much. Now go get them. Thank you, Governor Holcomb. Well, we've reached the moment you've all been waiting for. Normally, this is the time we'd ask you to stand, come forward, and one by one, walk across the stage to receive your diploma and well-deserved congratulations. Obviously, this year we're doing things a little differently, but I believe it will still be very special. Earlier this week, you should have received a graduation package from us. If you did, please get that now and remove the thick white envelope inside. Don't open the envelope just yet. Just place it next to you. Now, please take a few moments to visit rose-hallman.edu slash grad in a new tab. There you can find and click on your name to watch a short video prepared just for you. After you watch your video, please open your envelope and remove the contents. Savor this moment as a culmination of years of hard work and perseverance and celebrate with the special people in your life who've played a role in making this day happen. You may want to also take a few moments and watch the videos announcing the graduation of your friends. However, please be mindful of the countdown clock that will be displayed so that you can return here in time for the last stages of today's event.
I hope you enjoyed your video. Now, class of 2020, to officially confer your degree, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Rose Hallman Institute of Technology, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science and admit you to all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. In witness whereof, you have today received your diploma bearing the seal of the Institute and signatures of its principal officers. Now, to those receiving a graduate degree, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Rose Hallman Institute of Technology, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master or Master of Science and admit you to all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. In witness whereof, you have today received your diploma bearing the seal of the Institute and signatures of its principal officers. You may now all transfer the tassels on your caps from the right to the left, signifying the fact that you are a Rose Hallman graduate. Congratulations to you all. Now with a special farewell, please welcome Amal Agarwal, President of the International Student Association. Greetings to one and all present here. Today I, Amol Agarwal, feel fortunate for this opportunity to share my feelings at the annual commencement at Rose Holman Institute of Technology. I could use this valuable time to talk about the coronavirus and how this world, this school, and even this ceremony are not the same anymore. However, I choose to talk about not what changed, but what remained constant, the singularity that exists within each and every one of us that makes us one and the same person. I believe in the existence of an objective and absolute truth within each of us. In our busy lives, it is important for us to be able to listen to that inner voice, the singularity within us. My inner voice has helped me make deep connections with people from different backgrounds during my time at Rose. Born and brought up in an underdeveloped town in India, I saw an immense opportunity ahead of me to diversify while preserving and spreading my own culture. Today, Rose has given me something more than good grades and internship experiences. Today, I'm confident that Rose has given me my biggest strength, the power of accommodating cultures. I would like to sincerely thank the students, faculty, and the various clubs and organizations on campus for making this journey a true success for me. And now to offer some closing comments and introduce the final video in today's event, I welcome back to stage our president, Robert A. Coons. Class of 2020, you've made it. Now it's your turn. You've got what it takes to build a rewarding and wonderful life for yourself and to improve our world. I know you will succeed at whatever you do and make us all very proud. I hope you've enjoyed this virtual graduation ceremony. Now, please join Rosie for a parting trip around campus.
Yeah.